Hello, mysterious person behind the screen, and welcome back to the Christmas commentaries that me and Isaac are doing. Um, as I just said, I'm joined by Isaac. Remember, if this makes YouTube, we're no longer the wet commentators, we're the sticky commentators. <laughs> and uh, this time, we are going to be doing Home Alone 2, Lost in New York. Um, so, yeah, not much more to say then. So, without further ado... If you'd like to sync this up with your own copy of Home Alone 2, this is the Blu-ray release. Uh, put the film to the start and press play in 3, 2, 1, go. Now, Chris Columbus, I think in the uh, commentary for the first film, he described this as a as a remake of the first film and yeah <laughs> yeah you can see why <laughs> it basically is a remake but, yeah but it's a good one <laughs> it, it falls into the category of one of those sequels that is essentially the, the first film all over again but on a bigger scale and i don't mind that me neither it's, it's probably one of the most notorious cases of just being the first film again because it, it literally is but I know a lot of people hate the film for that, but I really like that because it's it's quite familiar and sort of nice. Yeah, because it's kind of part of the joke as well. They're almost aware that this is happening again. Like um, they say, um, I think Marv says, this ain't like the last time. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's literally, I think that's part of the joke, but I can see why people would be put off by it because yeah, it is the same one, but on a larger scale but yeah i'd rather have something like this as opposed to home alone 4 where they just recast everyone and it's awful and doesn't feel like a home alone film yeah exactly i i would rather have this than mm -hmm. a lot of what we got later and um yeah it, it, this i mean there's only two home alone films anyway <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> um to be honest, there are there are times where I think I sometimes prefer it to the first one. Like, obviously, objectively, the first one's better, but uh, sometimes I kind of think yeah. that, uh, I like the I like the um, the kind of spins that they put on certain uh, certain jokes and things. Yeah, because yeah, I've heard quite a few people say, "Oh, the fact that they get into another argument means they learn nothing in the first film." I mean, right, just because you have, in real life, just because you have a family argument doesn't mean you're going to be great for the rest of your life. You're still going to get into arguments, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, funnily enough, there was a credit there that said, based on characters by John Hughes, but it says it's written by John Hughes. I was going to so... say, yeah, that's weird. <laughs> yeah, I thought everything in Home Alone was him anyway, so... That's really odd, yeah, you're right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I would expect to see that credit on one of the Home Alone sequels, like, after two, but not not one of the first two. Yeah. Interestingly enough, they drink Coca-Cola in this, but in the first film it was Pepsi, so I guess Coca-Cola won the product placement this time. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, yeah, there's clearly some... Uh... You can see the shift in in uh, in product placement. <laughs> I think the um, recorder that Kevin's got there. I think that was made into a toy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. I'm I. The, I've seen a lot of sort of um, of promotional stuff at the time that is just based around this this talk boy. <laughs> it's like this yeah. is the main thing of Home Alone Two. And I think this was the second highest grossing film of 1992, because I think Aladdin, uh, Disney's Aladdin, came at number one. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah. But the, but the tragic thing is that um, Aladdin, Home Alone 2, and The Muppet Christmas Carol, they all come out round about the same time as each other, and sadly, Muppet Christmas Carol kind of suffered for it. Yeah, it did, yeah. <laughs> That's a shit. Ah, Plaza Hotel. Who owns that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wonder. <laughs> can't wait for Home. Can't wait for Home Alone Six when Joe Biden makes a. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing now. I feel a bit more at home watching this than I have the last four years, because now that he's lost the election, yeah. I can watch this and just laugh at his cameo rather than shudder. 
<laughs> yeah. The only good thing he did was showing Kevin where the lobby is. Yeah. And as the unusual suspect points out, he goes the complete wrong way. <laughs> oh, yeah, he does. Now, Macaulay Culkin, for this film, he was paid four and a half million dollars. And I think when he did My Girl, he became the first child actor to be paid one million dollars. Yeah, he was he was on top of the world at this point. He was absolutely oh, like yeah. rolling in it. Which, of course, led to nonsense like what happened to Macaulay Culkin as he got older. Yeah. <laughs> But as I said last time, I mean, he's, he's sorted his life now. out a lot. Yeah, he's forty now. Like he's yeah. sorted his life out a lot since since all that since since he was spotted on the street looking skinny as a skeleton with bottles of beer in his hand and cigarettes and yeah, I don't know if you remember that photo. Now I know um, the Google Assistant ad. I say that's the true Home Alone three. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it, it absolutely is. <laughs> Yeah, I always forget that Kevin's right, now got a question. A... Yeah, I, I was I always forget that Kevin's now got a, uh, an obsession with Christmas trees in this one. <laughs> it's like his big obsession um, now. He does, yeah. Yeah, sorry. What My were you going to say before? Kind of school. Yeah, what kind of school is this? Because Buzz is clearly older than Kevin, yet they're in the same performance. That's just weird. Yeah, but it just looks like an adult has snuck his way into a kid's. <laughs> yeah, he looks like he looks university age. Why is he still there? <laughs> and Kevin looks like elementary school age or mm. primary school age. Yeah. So why is he there? <laughs> why are these parents laughing? That's just it's really that's cruel. Going to scar someone for life. It's really cruel. <laughs> Even I mean. Even Uncle Frank's laughing. <laughs> I was gonna say, like Uncle Frank is absolutely loving it. He is. He's. <laughs> yeah, he's kind of the. Yeah, I mean, we've all got one of those uncles who's a complete asshole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. I question why everyone fell over. All Kevin did was shove him a little bit, <laughs> and everyone falls over, yeah. and the the piano lady gets hit in the head, and it's like. I know, it's just so weird. <laughs> There's a lot of moments like that in this film, but I love it nonetheless. I love how his dialogue has become more sophisticated. <laughs> I know, yeah. I think I think he's great as Buzz in this one. I think he he's better than he is in the first one. He he is sort of He's chewing the seat. He's yeah. sort of so slimy. He's, he's brilliant. Mm -hmm. He is really slimy. He could almost be a Bond villain, especially yeah. when he sits in the chair and is like, what a troubled young... Yeah. <laughs> what a troubled spy you are, Mr. Bond. <laughs> and like that that actor as well, He's um he, he speaks very fondly about the Home Alone films and what they did for his career and so I mean I'm yeah I'm not sure I've seen him in anything else but he's he's always very happy to talk about these films yeah pretty much I think everyone came back for this film apart from the guy who played Old Man Molly <laughs> yeah literally everyone on the cast and crew is back it's, it's kind of insane actually it's, it's, yeah. Yeah, with me. <laughs> yeah, with me. He still wants to piss all over <laughs> him. <laughs> and given that that's his brother in real life, that is a, a uh, very disturbing <laughs> prospect. <laughs> yeah, with me. I want to piss all <laughs> over you, Kevin. <laughs> If my punishment was to sleep on the third floor, I probably would get in trouble all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, a great, it's great up there. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. Because it's not even like an like a cold, damp attic or anything. It's 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 just a very like big, spacious room. Mm-hmm. 
I know Catherine O'Hara, I think, when she said she was doing Home Alone 2, um, quite a few people said to her, how could you lose your child again? Yeah. <laughs> I think this film's budget was double the first one because yeah. Yeah. I think it's really expensive to film in New York because they did actually get. Yeah, that's the, yeah. There's there's all sorts of stories about how much it cost them to like. I think if you look at production of um, Spider-Man Three, uh, that that ended up being <laughs> one of the most expensive films ever made, and like, I think the most expensive film ever made when it when it was when it was released. And most of the money was just the fees that, that the production had to pay to shoot in New York. It's like insane. Yeah, that's it's, insane. It's absolutely insane. And nobody in this house decided to set an alarm yeah. <laughs> again. Again, you think, what happened last time? Someone would know. And, and then the statue gets knocked over again. <laughs> yep. And the film gets sped up again. <laughs> <laughs> Heck, I think if you look close, I think Uncle Frank's still got his pajama trousers on. He does, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and his slippers, yeah. I think, yeah. I mean, at least this time Kevin gets as far as the airport. <laughs> yeah. Now, see, that is that is it's very subtle, but that is one thing that this film does differently. It, it does sort of acknowledge <laughs> that they are trying everything in their power to make sure Kevin gets on the plane this time, <laughs> as opposed to the first yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah, because it really should be called City Alone or yeah hotel <laughs> alone <laughs> well, it's, it's like I said last time that's probably why they added the lost in New York subtitle just to, get, to yeah. sort of cover themselves now when we see them run through the airport in a, in a second, there's no way you could do that now no, because yeah. of the amount of security clearance you've got to do. It's oh, it's a pain. Yeah. Yeah. God, yeah. Going through, going, catching a flight now, is is, it's a whole event within itself to just get on the plane because the amount of security you have to go through the bag checks. Yeah, you have to. Um, I mean, you've got to show up at least like an hour before your plane goes. Oh yeah. At least. And as the unusual suspect says, all sorts of things. Strange men feeling up your penis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're just going to quote him a lot. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. I mean, what a coincidence. There's a guy wearing the exact same coat as his dad. Yep. <laughs> With a similar hairstyle as well. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> he was also running for his plane. Would yeah. be pretty bad if he was just walking. <laughs> yeah. This one they're going to Miami, right? Uh, yeah, Miami, Florida. Yeah, it's Cause... Miami. Uh... Yeah. yeah, it's Paris in the first one, Miami this one. Because I always get them mixed up. Yeah. Well, it's like I said last time. I get these two films mixed up a lot, in terms of which jokes belong <laughs> yeah, to which film and. and... She says to him, go find an empty seat in a bit. And finding an empty seat, what, three, two, three days before Christmas? Yeah. That's not going to happen. 
<laughs> that that is. And the way they later, and the way they later get a flight from Miami to New York and arrive what in a few hours? That yep. would not happen on Christmas Eve. <laughs> Everything would be booked. That is, I you know, Christmas is my favourite time of year. I love it. That is the worst thing about Christmas is all all the insane amounts of crowds and stress. Like I I hate being like in in the yeah. middle of all that. It's just oh. Oh, this French guy coming up here again. <laughs> God, he could be saying anything. <laughs> Now, apparently, according to IMDb, what he's saying is along the lines of, um, I'm a tourist here. Do you know any good restaurants? Why don't yeah. you talk to me? You do speak French, right? <laughs> <laughs> he breaks the fourth wall here. He looks at the camera. <laughs> he's like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> That's what, this, this film definitely has a little bit... It's, it's a little bit more cartoony than the first one, for sure. Like that, Even just little bits like that, like him looking at the camera and stuff. I mean, yeah, the traps later in this are probably would kill you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're about to see the Kevin bit. Where she screams her lungs off, and she recently oh. did that again on TikTok. TikTok, it's so funny. Yeah, the, what like the what a scream! That is just it's genuinely incredible. Yeah. <laughs> it's just the amount of power it behind makes, it. Yeah, I suppose it makes sense because you're like, how can I lose my child again? Yeah. <laughs> I think I, I don't I think this feels a little bit more Christmassy than the first one. I think just because New York is so like New York at Christmas is so is such a a distinctive image of the season. Like with the, the Rockefeller tree. Yeah, and stuff. because Yeah, it always does look nice around Christmas time. I mean I've never been but uh, I'd like to go one time. Yeah, me too. I'd love to go to New York. Yeah, all the best Christmas films seem to be set in New York, like um, yeah. this, Miracle on 34th Street. Yeah, Alf. Though I was, have you seen the Rockefeller Christmas tree this year? I haven't, no. Oh, What's God. it look like? It looks like shit. <laughs> it looks like it's been like wilted and degraded, like it's missing patches. It's, it it just looks like it's been oh. yeah it looks really bad and it kind of it, people oh <laughs> people were saying it kind of sums up this year because it just looks like it's been <laughs> it's been like left left somewhere that is since last year and just picked back up again <laughs> it's just like oh that's just shit yeah it's a big thing put a bit more effort into it because of how rubbish this year has been yeah yeah you think. oh here it is yep <laughs> 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 it's brilliant. That's oh, she's great in these. Yeah. Plus, later on in the film, we kind of see the uglier side of New York, which, when you think about it, particularly yeah. in Christmas films, isn't really highlighted upon that much. But yeah. I'm glad they do touch upon it. So yeah, it can sure. be a dangerous place. Yeah, as we established last time, the woman. Is... Oh, sorry, go on. Yeah. Yeah. Um. If a kid said that to me, if looked pretty panicked, but kept saying I'll be fine, I'd be like, no, I think we're gonna have to <laughs> take you to the office and ask you who you are and where yeah. your parents are. <laughs>
this song is like one of my favourite Christmas songs, I think. Like, oh, they play it all the time in the shop. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, it's the song from Home Alone from 2. Home Alone I actually don't know what it's called. <laughs> uh, all, <laughs> all Alone on Christmas, I think, by Darlene Love. Ah, uh, okay. And the music video for this has Macaulay Culkin in it. Oh, nice. Like, he's behind a mixing desk, and they're all like, ready, Mac? And he sort of turns around in the chair with sunglasses <laughs> and goes, let's rock and roll. <laughs> it's like... I know for a while that um, a lot of the shots of the Twin Towers were removed from this, like on TV and stuff. They were, yeah, yeah. particularly after 9-11. Yeah. In fact, with the recent news that um, pretty much everyone is appearing in Spider-Man 3, <laughs> I want them to confirm that Macaulay Culkin will be in it as Kevin, <laughs> and it will be a shared universe. <laughs> Spider-Man in, home, in a Home Alone film. We'll get a flashback that will reveal that the first Spider-Man film was was set in 1992, and as Spider-Man swings through oh, New yeah. as Spider-Man swings through New York, we'll see Kevin watching him <laughs> on his little tour of New yeah. York, like a de-aged Macaulay Culkin. <laughs> like the... Yeah, I mean the funny thing about particularly the MCU Spider-Man is that yeah. you know the filmmakers keep saying, "Oh, we base this so much on John Hughes comedies," and I'm like, really? <laughs> It doesn't feel like it. I don't get that vibe at all, to be honest, no. Well, no, those MCU Spider-Man films sort of seem to think that just being set in high school is enough to classify you as a John Hughes film, which... No, it ain't. Which it isn't. <laughs> <It's> the... <laughs> I don't know. That is, yeah, I as as anyone will, who follows me on Twitter will know that I, I have many, many, many problems with, with MCU Spider-Man, but it's a topic for another day, I guess. <laughs> yep. Now, one thing they definitely get right about Florida is that it's always raining. Because I once went in uh, August to go to Orlando, and uh, yeah, it did rain quite occasionally and a lot. Yeah. Quite a few times it just sneaked up on you. One one minute it'd be nice and sunny, then boom, here comes the rain. Yeah. What what I find when I went to Florida was that it'd be really sunny and really hot in the day, and then in the evenings and like the night time the rain would just it was like massive thunderstorms all the time like i went in november um uh, and yeah it was it was just like two different worlds depending on whether it was day or night Now, the uh, wet bandits, well, sticky bandits, I should say, are about to come <laughs> back. And honestly, I think they're funnier here than they are in the first film. Yeah, me too. I think they are. They, they dial up yeah. the sort of... Marv becomes stupider. And Harry seems to become yeah, more Yeah, but it doesn't of... become angry. No, yeah, yeah. It doesn't become annoying for both of them. I just think it becomes funnier. Yeah, it, it doesn't feel like they're caricatures of themselves. It just feels like they've sort of find the characters a bit more. Yeah. I am shocked Joe Pesci came back for, to do this, though. Considering all the stories about him on set from the first one, I'm I'm kind of shocked that he might, that they got him to come back for this. Yeah. Maybe he wanted a trip to New York. <laughs> <laughs> I know this was shot in winter and apparently got so cold the cameras froze. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me actually, yeah. It's... They look cold, yeah. that's the thing. They look... All the actors do look freezing, especially like later on when they're in Central Park and stuff. Like their faces are really red and it just is like. <laughs> now, we're about to see Frank Oz here. I think he puts money into. The Santa Tin or something. Yeah, I, really odd cameo, like really weird cameo. Yeah. Maybe he was just like in New York at the time, like walked past the production, and they were just like, "Oh, yeah. Frank Oz, <laughs> do you want to be in our film?" Frank Oz is in here. We're the Sticky Bandits. <laughs> yeah, there he is. The there guy. He's not Frank even Oz in focus. <laughs> Right, 
the odd thing is, um, a woman covered in pigeons isn't that scary, to be honest. Because yeah. Because there are people, there are people who feed pigeons in real life. It's not like it's an out of normal thing. Yeah. <laughs> and to be to be fair, yeah. his first encounter with her, he, he, they they make a smart move by not having him terrified. Like he just sort of sick yeah. and, and runs away. Whereas they could have had him scream and do all that stuff. But I think they only have him scream later yeah. on when it's in when it's at night and she's reaching towards him. Yeah, I was just saying. Imagine if they gave her a backstory like. She murdered her family and feeds the remains to her pigeons. <laughs> <laughs> God, the the, the the I think Marv has troubles with women. He does. He does. <laughs> it just needs to be understood. <laughs> <laughs> the close calls they I have here. Harry was insane. a feminist. It is. I thought Harry was a feminist. Serves you right. <laughs> <laughs> ah, here comes the infamous cameo. <laughs> yeah. Because, <laughs> um, yeah, at the time he was the owner of the Plaza Hotel. Yeah, he was. I think he's... Does he still own it in real life? I'm not sure. Oh, maybe. I don't think he does now, no. I think it's, I think it's owned by someone else. I think yeah. last I checked, he might have been owned by a company. India. Oh, well, fair enough. Yeah. But it's like $1,500 a night to stay there. Yeah. <laughs> it is it hallowed expensive. Kevin, help me make America great again. <laughs> <laughs> down the hall and to the left, and he comes out going down the hall and to the right. <laughs> Oh god, the voice changing's coming and <laughs> I'm surprised the um, reception is false for this because <laughs> no one, not even an adult, would talk like that. It's clearly been slowed down. I see Peter McAllister, the father. The father. <laughs> I'd like a hotel, please. Yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> she doesn't. The weird thing is she doesn't even ask, well, when do you want to stay? When do you want to leave? That's it. She sounds positively <laughs> thrilled to be speaking to yeah. him and doesn't ask any questions. <laughs> Apparently it's Chris Columbus's wife. Oh, is it? Oh, I could be wrong. Yeah. Well, you see Chris Columbus later in the film because I think he's in the toy shop with who I think is his real-life daughter. I was going to say, and yeah. Like, he's, yeah. Like a, he's like a dad with a kid looking at toys. Yeah. Ah, uh, yes, and I just realised Tim Curry is in this film. Oh, and he's fabulous in this <laughs> film. He's so good. He's the best thing about he's one this. Of those, I think, yeah, definitely. I think he's one of those actors who, I think after every take, he just says, oh, God, I love my job. <laughs> <laughs> he throws himself into everything he does. Like, I've never seen a yeah, performance I... from Tim Curry where, he, where it was like, oh, he's phoned that in. He's just always giving yeah. 110%. I do know that, um, sadly, he did have a stroke a few years ago and now he's in a wheelchair. Yes, I, yeah, I've seen interviews with him recently and he, he is looking better, but yeah, it is a shame. Because, funnily enough, I think he voiced Palpatine in the. In season five and six of the Clone Wars, or it might have just been season six. Yeah, it was season like the latter half of season five, because the voice changes halfway yeah, through. Yeah. yeah, and actually, if you watch one, I think it's the first episode of season five. If you watch that, it's Ian Abercrombie's voice, and then halfway through, like there's there's one line that's Tim Curry's voice, and ha like mm. it halfway through the episode, and I guess it was because. Ian Abercrombie couldn't passed away before he could record that line, but it's like it goes from talking like this to talking like this, <laughs> like halfway through the line of dialogue. You, yeah, it's insane. Honestly, with all that makeup, he could have easily have played the Emperor. I oh think. yeah, for sure. Um, 
Yeah, I know he was going to play uh, voice the Joker in Batman the Animated Series, but yeah. now he got replaced by Mark Hamill. God. Apparently he was too scary. <laughs> it doesn't surprise me, actually. I, I, I would like to... I'd like to hop to that dimension. He might have used where his... He, uh, um... Where that exists. <laughs> He might have used his Pennywise voice and it yeah. would have been too much for the kids. What? 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 <laughs> Young fellow. <laughs> <laughs> Sidwick. A magazine and a pizza. <laughs> Out in front, sir. Compliments of the Plaza Hotel. I mean, he's probably the only, he's probably the smartest one there, because even yeah. he suspects that, what, a ten-year-old checking in by himself into one, into the most expensive hotel in the world is the tiniest bit suspicious. To be fair, he's doing the right thing by by asking the hotel staff to keep an eye on him. He's, yeah. do, he's doing the right thing. And I always forget Rob Schneider's in this. It's really weird it is, to me that yeah. Rob Schneider's in this. He's not for stereotype. Yeah. I mean, it does look like a really nice hotel. Oh yeah, I'd love to does. stay there for one night, but I'm not. A, I'm not a millionaire. I was going to say, yeah. If 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 I had all the money in the world, maybe. <laughs> but yeah, I don't. <laughs> yeah, I love this recurring gag with um, Rob Schneider. He keeps asking for a tip, but just get keeps getting chewing gum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well. Uh... If a hotel staff asks me for tips, I'd just say, here's your tip, keep working. Yeah. <laughs> now there's an error here. This entire scene is a complete error. The Plaza Hotel does not have a swimming pool. <laughs> I looked oh. it up. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, yeah. Damn. Okay, <laughs> no, it doesn't have a pool, apparently, yeah. so... This is completely wrong. <laughs> yeah, and I've got to be honest, every time I hear Jingle Bell Rock, I just think of this. Yeah, same here. <laughs> yeah. Whenever I hear a song, I'm always like, oh, it's the song from Home Alone 2. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think, um, yeah, I definitely think the Angels with Filthy, with Filthy Souls gag is funnier here than it is in the first film because yeah. I think because there's more interaction. Because yes, if yeah. with Marv, he was just scared by it, and with um, <laughs> the pizza guy, it was just a few words said, but here it's a full on conversation and it's so funny. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> and it's his face. It's his face when he says it. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, God, do I have to? <laughs> There's an insane guest with a gun! <laughs> <laughs> they actually believe it and it's funny. <laughs> Cheeks, bony barb, Cliff. <laughs> yeah, look at Cliff. I know there's a... I think he says Little Mo or something and I just think... Oh wait, is it Mo from The Simpsons? Yeah. <laughs> I, I got crap I fooled. Well, Mo with the gimpy leg. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's it's the fact that they got the actor back from uh, from the first one as well. Oh just yeah, for they... this, it's the same guy. <laughs> yeah, I could be wrong, but I think this was his. Um, I think this was his last film. It wouldn't I surprise me. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me at all. 
But the funny thing is, the whole Merry Christmas, you filthy animal, everyone thinks it comes from the first film, but no, it comes yeah. from this one. Because he doesn't say Merry Christmas in that. <laughs> yeah, plus I like how they actually gave this... Uh, this Angels with Filthy Souls scene a Christmas feel to it because if you look carefully at the film, there's a Christmas tree in the background. Merry Christmas! <laughs> yeah. <at the> <laughs> Even gangsters celebrate Christmas. <laughs> it's my like Kevin. If you were that scared of the first of the first film, would you really be watching the sequel? <laughs> exactly. Oh, here comes the clown bit. <laughs> Ironic yeah. that Tim Curry is scared by it. <laughs> I don't point. get. He's about to say. He's about to say housekeeping, but he seems to pawn some weird German accent. Housekeeping. housekeeping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm like, right. He's never met you before, and he doesn't know what you sound like. So why are you putting on a voice? <laughs> housekeeping. <laughs> Why? I don't get it. Is he trying to scare him? <laughs> and this clown bit as well. Is <laughs> in 30, yeah. 40 seconds no. he manages to blow up an entire inflatable clown, turn the water on so it's steaming, <laughs> and attach strings to yeah. it. <laughs> I mean... I always took it that he just had this pre-prepared in case this did happen. <laughs> but, yeah, I do like um, this mannequin joke. Obviously, it's reused from the first one, but, again, I think it's funnier because yeah. it actually interacts with the person being fooled by it. Yeah. But the problem is, this recording, Kevin didn't get all of this. He only got the bit where he goes into the bathroom. That's we didn't even true. hear him sing this in earlier. That's true, yeah. I mean, shower. I don't think shower curtains work like that. I think mean, you could still see who's inside. <laughs> I mean, it's bright blue. Look at it. <laughs> it's oh the fact they put a Kevin, shower cap um, on it. There's... Oh yeah, he did. <laughs> I just realised um, there's that theory that Kevin is Jigsaw, and Jigsaw uses a puppet. Yeah. No. Ah, there we go. <laughs> and and we know Kevin has expert handling in mannequins and puppet <laughs> work, so yep. <laughs> yeah, when I um landed in Florida about ten years ago, it was pouring it down with rain, we were in the coach, yeah, you know, going to our hotel. This is what it was lo- this is what we were reminded <laughs> of, we felt like singing that. <laughs> Just look at them. They're all gulping at the rain, like, oh my god. <laughs> Never seen rain before. <laughs> I really love the look of like of this as well, like the whole the, the warm lighting as well. It's good. Yeah, because I think you mentioned last time. Um, this film looks a lot cleaner than the, yeah. than the first film in terms of cinematography. And, it does. Yeah, because I think they went to a bit more of an effort to make it a bit more Christmas-related with mm. warmer colours. Yeah, this this one's got less... It's definitely got less grain to it. And also, it's it's yeah. it's, it's not got that filter put on it like the first one has. Like the, the first one looks smoky and filtered and hazy. Whereas this one, yeah, this one doesn't have that filter on it, which is interesting. I don't know if the DP was the same, probably. Yeah. Yeah, I bet. Um... New York lit up at night, especially at Christmas, looks amazing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because I remember seeing um, the Art Attack Christmas special where they more or less did a painting with the lights. They just got a load of 
they got an entire street to turn their lights off, but also turn them back on, but in the style of, like, Santa in his sledge being pulled by a reindeer, and it looked oh. amazing. Oh, cool. Oh, that would be yeah, cool, it's yeah. on YouTube, you can nice. you can probably find it, so... I need to watch that, actually, because it's Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> Michael Jackson. <laughs> wow, that's what? Ten fifty dollar bills? That's like five hundred dollars. That's a hell of a lot for a tip. <laughs> yeah. Mr. McAllister. Mr. McAllister. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter? Store wouldn't take your <laughs> stolen credit card. Yeah, I love the shit eating grin he has when Kevin's <laughs> running towards him when he's being chased by Harry and Mar. He's like, Ooh, I've got him now. <laughs> I have waited a long time for this, rat, my little <laughs> green friend. <laughs> Just imagine him being the emperor. Thing is, this role could have been so thankless as well. It could have been just just really mm. unmemorable role, but Tim Curry just makes it like insane. Yeah, memorable. if it wasn't if it wasn't Tim Curry, I wouldn't have remembered this character at all. But yeah, yeah. He puts so much into it; it makes him so slimy, <laughs> but also funny at the same time. You almost <laughs> want him to succeed and find Kevin out for fraud. <laughs> it's like he takes his job so seriously. There it is. Have a lovely day. Have a lovely day. I mean, we're about to get the infamous transition from uh, the Grinch's grin to his, <laughs> and it's perfect. Tim Tim Curry should have honestly played the Grinch in the live-action version. Oh, uh, that would have been so good. Then again, I do love Jim Carrey in that film, but that's very true. Yeah. I mean, there's only one Grinch I like, and that's the original. I don't like the Jim Carrey one, and I don't like the Benedict Cumberbatch one. Oh, fair enough. I haven't uh, seen the Benedict Cumberbatch one, but like, I watched the trailer, and it was just like, what the fuck? You just <laughs> what, like Benedict Cumberbatch as the Grinch? That sounds on paper amazing, but he's from what the trailer yeah. from the trailer it's, it sounded like he he was just doing this weird high pitched voice. It's like what? It's Benedict yeah. Cumberbatch. He, 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 yeah, don't have him speaking in American accents. Have him speak British. Yeah. yeah Listen I to him in The Hobbit. The original. Yeah. It, it, yeah. I mean, yeah, Smaug and the Grinch are quite similar. They both live in the mountain. <laughs> and they hate and they hate people. But it, like, <laughs> ah, that transition. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, so, like, you, you just think, like, listen to him in The, in the Hobbit with... As, as Smaug, like, with his big commanding voice, and, like, like you nice. would think it'd be great. Mm-hmm. I have been ice skating before, and it's definitely not as easy as it, as they, as they make it out to be on films and TV. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is hard, but you start to get the hang of it. I've never been ice skating, actually. It's probably one for the bucket list. he's nicking all these um these items of clothing but no one no no one notices even the people who are wearing them yes (laughs) (laughs) that was like two gloves pulled off a kid that's something that's not gonna go unnoticed and like the whip sound effect as well like the what Mm -hmm. happened to that child what did you just do yeah, to him? Just... <laughs> I mean, when I was nine, I didn't rob 
Rob shop, Rob sweet shops, because I'd yes. probably get sent to juvenile hall for yeah. it. <laughs> you got to spend Christmas in juvenile hall, juvenile hall, juvenile hall. <laughs> Capish. Capish. I understand. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, it's it's disappointing. I know. They weren't home. I wasn't an answering machine. Yeah. I, like <laughs> I mean, I work in retail and we do get shoplifters. I really just want to do that. I just want yes. to call their parents and scare the shit out of them. I'd be like, yeah, get out of my sight. <laughs> this isn't a real toy shop, is it? No, but it should be. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, um, the kids, the the extras here, apparently they were able to take a toy home with them after filming. That was nice. Oh, of that's them. cool, yeah. That is cool. Yeah. And we're about to see um, Harry and Marv get um, the hiding in what, Wendy houses? <laughs> and I'm like, it's a good job nobody buys those. No nobody's bought by them. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, imagine if they bought it, took it home to their kid, have them say, there's a surprise for you in the garden. They unwrap it. Wow, Wendy house, thanks, Mum. Hey, kid, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got me joking. They just find two, <laughs> two Joe Pesci in it. there. This is exactly the Joe Pesci I wanted. <laughs> there's no beer for me to... I use the floor, though. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, that's actually a pretty ingenious plan that I'm surprised more burglars don't try. Yeah. Hide in the Wendy house, because no one will check there. I'm surprised it didn't give people ideas. Yeah, there's Chris Columbus. Yeah. Oh my god, this, this again when he asks where he got all the money from. <laughs> I took pictures of your naked man last night and I blinded him. <laughs> 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 Honestly, his green screen effects are so seamless. Yeah. It genuinely looks like he was in the film. It takes your brain a while to, to adjust to to like the difference. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, that explains it. <laughs> yeah, that explains it. You know, he's probably, you know, Mr. Duncan here is probably the only person who's not, he's probably the only character who's not recycled from the film, like, because obviously with the pigeon lady, it's old man Marley again. And obviously yeah. Obviously got the wet bandits and all the family, so he's probably the only original character in this film, uh, yeah. aside from the hotel stuff. Yeah. I remember as a kid, I thought he was Santa Claus. <laughs> I don't know how I came to that conclusion. <laughs> That's an interesting theory. It's interesting yeah. that I, gen I don't know how my child brain came to this conclusion. But, but for a kid, and like I, as I as I got older as well, I always just thought, oh yeah, Home Alone Two's got Santa Claus in it. And then every time I watch the film, I'm like, wait, that that that's not that's not a thing. <laughs> it's just like I don't yeah, know where I got that from. Yeah, because honestly, it's the first film that has the fake Santa in it. Yeah. I know you're not the real Santa Claus. What makes you think that? Oh, <laughs> any of these reasons. <laughs> I'll be honest, I've paused that and just looked at all the reasons. Yes, he same gives. here. <laughs> Never put turtle doves on my Christmas tree. No, me neither. <laughs> it's always baubles and baubles, tinsel, light, and a star at the top. That's it, really. Yeah, same. I put uh, chocolates on the tree. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I put candy canes on this year as well. Oh, nice. Oh yeah, you'll be friends forever. The funny friends thing friends is. Um, I mean, particularly in the first film, we never saw Kevin actually interact with other kids, because... No, yeah. Yeah, you'd think... You'd think it's, it obviously goes to school, so you think maybe he'd tell, like, I don't know, a kid who he sees in his neighbourhood, or maybe he doesn't get on with kids. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin's 
Kevin is superior to all children. Because <laughs> I like how humble Mr. Duncan is, because he, obviously he sees the picture and it's obviously Mr. Duncan, but he doesn't say, I'm Mr. Duncan. He just says, oh, Mr. Duncan does everything for the children. Yeah. Yeah, it shows how humble he really is. That's nice. Yeah, I love this meeting, but it's completely implausible, as you said earlier, that they keep bumping into each other but missing each other. <laughs> right, even when you arrange to meet up, because I've been to London and had to meet up with people, it's bloody hard. Yeah, it's difficult. It's difficult. <laughs> yeah. There's so many people there. Plus, they never call him Kevin, they just always say kid. The kid, yeah. Yeah, the, the only thing they know him by is his last name, McAllister. Hi, you pale. <laughs> yeah, I love Kevin's reaction. I just love how he drops the map because he's like, "That is, I know that voice, but I didn't want to hear it again." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he does the he does the smartest thing when he's in a street full of people. Scream! That yeah. <laughs> is literally the smartest thing anyone could do. You're a ten-year-old boy being approached by two dodgy-looking people. It's just scream. Yeah. There you go. See, th th these two workers villains because get those uh... yeah <laughs> sorry go I was on. just gonna say um these this guy selling necklaces here you get that so much in particularly London I think people oh. trying to sell you stuff you don't want for cheap prices oh god it's yeah. annoying. I had... I'm like no I don't want your novelty hat that you probably got from eBay from someone else yeah well this is the thing isn't it I went to Paris a few years ago um and I, I was near the Eiffel Tower, and uh, near the Eiffel Tower, you gotta be careful, because people will scam you. Yeah. Like I had someone, I had someone um, grab my wrist, and he said, "Let me show you something." He was put, he was putting on like a, a like a a band around my arm, and uh, I knew what he was. I sort of, I clocked on to what he was doing. He was gonna put, he was gonna tie the thing around my arm and say, "Oh, that'll be five euros, please," and I couldn't have gotten out of it. Because it was already on my arm, and he was going to say, "Oh yeah, five euro, five euro." Start, you know, pay up. Right. So you got a bit. So I sort of, I halfway through, I managed to sort of clock on to what he was doing and sort of grab my arm and pull it out. It was you got to be really careful because that's how they get you. They, they, you don't realise that they're trying to sell you stuff. Mhm. Mm yeah. Would he Stop really go to child. prison for you? <laughs> <laughs> I, well, he would. he would... really go to prison? Because A, he's only a kid, and B, it is his dad. I was going to say, yeah, I he's mean, a, yeah. I know he didn't, his dad didn't give him permission, but. Uh... He'd, he'd, get a, he'd get a stiff talking to <laughs> from his dad. Yeah. He'd, just probably, he'd probably just get grounded. <laughs> yeah, most like. Oh, I love this. You little. <laughs> Sugar. Come along, Cedric. <laughs> Surprise doesn't empty the whole fridge, it only takes a few biscuits. Yeah. Kid, you're gonna need more if you've been kicked out of your hotel. Yeah, because what, what is his plan? Is it to walk to the airport and then go and... <laughs> and then what? Maybe, yeah. I mean, actually, yeah, because I just realised he took his card off. Tim, yeah. The concierge took his card off him, so he can't spend any money. Yeah, he's got no... No way of getting anything. <laughs> yes, sir. 
you wonder what's going through the concierge's mind. He's like, am I talking to his dad or something? <laughs> It's the right... I was. <laughs> Everyone looks at him like they they were expecting this information. <laughs> Just I love the little pause he does before he's about to say, "I'm afraid you're mistaken." It's like he's thinking, "Wait, did I?" <laughs> <laughs> Cliff. <laughs> Poor Cliff. <laughs> I love Schneider's face there, he's like, shame. <laughs> I love how he keeps up that polite manner. He yeah. doesn't say, sir, you're stupid. He just that's says, like, I'm afraid you're mistaken. He's doing, he's doing his job, and that's the thing. He's actually a yeah. really good concierge. Concierge. <laughs> God. I love it. It's a smile. <laughs> the way he turns his head as well. If I ever meet Tim Curry, I'd love him to just say that. I love you. <laughs> all he could have said, you know, tell me you love me. All he could have gone with, oh, I love you. But he just goes, I love you. <laughs> he actually puts feeling into it. <laughs> And I love how they believe it's a real gun. Yeah. <laughs> Stay in your rooms. There's an insane <laughs> guest with a gun. <laughs> Why do I think that um, Plaza Hotel ch sales went down after this film? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there it is. It came from this film, not the first Merry Christmas you yeah. filmed. <laughs> He's taking it so seriously. With a gun! <laughs> With a gun! Now, if you look closely here, when Harry's holding up his hand, you can actually see the brand from yeah. the doorknob on the first film. There it is. It's still there. <laughs> and it's a perfectly it's a nice molded detail. brand. Like, they're threatening enough to actually believe that he's in serious trouble. That's the thing, they are threatening. Yeah. As well as being hilarious. Obviously he's dumb enough to reveal the whole plan, but yeah. Harry's smart enough to say, you want to shut up? <laughs> yeah. And, uh... They do become a bit more threatening in this because Harry has a gun. Because in like in the first film, it was like we're gonna do everything you did to us, kid. We're gonna burn your head with a blowtorch, smash your face yeah. with an iron. Now it's just like I've got a fuck. It's just like I've got a fucking gun. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the first one, it, they, they are just small time crooks. Whereas in this yeah, in this one, they're actively out for revenge against Kevin. <laughs> yeah, I, I believe they worked for the mafia. The mafia. <laughs> yeah. I try Marv's chat up line with women, but it doesn't work. Oh, well, hello. <laughs> well, hello. And also we've got another line that's pretty much verbatim from the first film. <laughs> Kids are scared of the park. You just take the word P you just take the word D and replace it with P and it's fine. There you go. Mm-hmm. Now I also remember those um this these steps and this fountain here was also used in Stuart Little too. <laughs> it was, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because that is set in New York and in Central Park. Stuart Little 2, Spider-Man and Home Alone, they all take place in the same universe. The same universe, yeah. 
Yeah. That's it, because isn't the kid from Stuart Little 2 the same kid in Spider-Man 2? Yeah, it says, how'd you do that? <laughs> it is, yeah. <laughs> That's what my mum was always saying. I just never actually believed her. <laughs> Someone asked the guy, how'd you get more YouTube subscribers? And he just replied with, you know, YouTube green vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> Work out, plenty of rest. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't... I also don't get this family. They <laughs> can afford to live in a big mansion, but this hotel looks so crap. Yeah. <laughs> it looks tiny. That's all they can afford? Well, yeah, then it's like... <laughs> They're not even going to another country this time. They're just going to another part of America. <laughs> yeah. Mm, that is... Uh, and they keep watching the dub of It's a Wonderful, it's life, a wonderful but life, but this time in Spanish. Again. Home Alone 2, he goes to New York. Home Alone 3, we end up going to Hong Kong in the Hong opening Kong. scene. Yeah. Home Alone 6, <laughs> we end up in space. Mars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's actually, there's actually, I would say this as well, there's more of a sense of urgency in this. Because in the first one, <laughs> you kind of, if you put yourself in the parent's shoes, you kind of know that he's he, <laughs> he's probably all right because they've just left him in the house. So you probably think, yeah, he's, he's probably got the sense to stay home. But in this one, New York is yeah. a big city. Whereas here he's of, in a big city. Yeah, full of yeah. dodgy people. As we see later on, we see the sort of nightlife of, of New York and it's not pleasant. So there is actually, if you put yourself yeah. in the parents' shoes, there is actually a genuine sense of danger for Kevin's life because anything could happen to him. In there is, city. yeah. Yeah. My theory is that his Uncle Rob is actually at home, but um, when he hears it to Kevin, he's like, don't bother. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if he said, good Samaritans, <laughs> they definitely wouldn't have answered. <laughs> Uncle Rob, again, yeah, Uncle Rob must be loaded. It's massive. It must be, yeah, because I think, um, I mean, the deleted scenes of the first film confirm this, because that's who they're seeing, because I think... Um, yeah, I think it is yeah. the same Uncle Rob. He's got an apartment in Paris. Yeah, he's got that an looks quite big. <laughs> an apartment in Paris. He's got a he's got a place in New York, which is massive, and he can afford to basically gut the whole place because they, they're like, "Oh, <laughs> yeah. he's renovating." That's not just renovating. That's gutting the whole place and starting from scratch. The walls are missing. Exactly, the floors are missing. Yeah. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. like. I mean, honestly, it looks like again. It looks like a. The house trap from Saw Two. Yeah, <laughs> I'm almost <laughs> expecting um Kevin to have pumped a deadly nerve toxin that causes you to spit up blood, <laughs> like in the second film <laughs> of Saw. I mean, I mean in Saw Two there is a victim who is burned alive in a furnace, and you know, Harry wow, Scott yeah. does get burnt and he ends up getting blown up. So yeah, the similarities are quite. <laughs> Ain't much better than oh, here, kid. God. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. He just stares at him as much. Yeah, he's like, who hired that? <laughs> I mean, oh, I had an unpleasant encounter with a taxi driver last year. Uh, I was getting uh, driven home from filming, and apparently, because we were late they he said i am gonna have to charge you more. and i was like okay i'll get i was getting my card out ready to pay and just like you know what just get out you're wasting my time what, to say what, what really the suspect said yeah god like, oh okay i'll take my business elsewhere fuckhead <laughs>
I remember um, if you follow Chris Johnson on Twitter, he was in um, he was in a cab uh, last year, I think. And the t- <laughs> the tweet was um, oh, okay. <laughs> the the tweet was, boy, our cab driver sure is quiet. I wonder why that is. And it's a photo of um, his uh, the radio on the on the dashboard of the car. And he had his pawn on. He had his oh, pawn. Wow. He had his pawn on pause. <laughs> he had his phone connected up, and it was like a pawn video that he'd paused. Oh, and he'd forgotten to turn off the display. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with the bird on her head, she reminds me of. She's a female version of the Black Guardian. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, true. Because when they when they come back in the eighties, they've got birds on the head for some reason. <laughs> yeah. This is what I was saying earlier. Like well, so they, she, yeah. they, they make sure to. I was to... just gonna say she looks a bit like um, Susan Boyle. <laughs> she does, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, they make sure to only make her like threatening, and like genuinely threatening yeah. in the nighttime scenes, and they, that, that's when Kevin's scared of her. Like earlier on, he's just sort of freaked out, and it's only in these threatening nighttime scenes that he actually is scared. So I think that's quite a smart move. I think. Yeah, plus unlike um, Old Man Marley, she doesn't actually have a name. We yeah, never find out what her name lady. is. Brenda Fricker. I think she was in Casualty or Holby City, something like that. Yeah, it was some hospital drama that she was most most famous for. I don't know, in a bit she's about to give a backstory of why she ended up homeless, and um, it's because um, she fell out of love with a man. Now, I'm, I kind of like to think that um, that did happen, but probably more dark stuff happened that she ended up on the streets, yeah. and obviously she's talking to a 10-year-old, she doesn't want to scare him or anything. Yeah, falling out of love with someone, that's... that's... I mean, there's that, I feel, I feel yeah. like there's falling out of love with someone... And then there's that person kicking you out, knowing full well you've got nowhere else to go. Yeah, exactly. Right, there's, there's That's you know, harsh. <laughs> that is very harsh. <laughs> Do we know what Roger... Is there a review online for what for um, for this from Roger Ebert? Or Siskel? Yeah, there is. Siskel and Ebert. Yeah, they're pretty much as negative as they were on the first film yeah. for this one. But it still baffles me as to Roger Ebert saying I preferred Home Alone 3 to the first <laughs> That is insane, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Gene Siskel's reaction is just priceless. He's like, what? From the original Home Alone? <laughs> His face is... Yeah, his entire face for that review is lit. His entire face for that review is like, "Who are you? And what have you done with Roger Ebert?" <laughs> Missed opportunity to have John Williams cameo as the as the um. The composer, the composer yeah, that would have yeah. been cool. Missed opportunity, but it is, and that's a shame. Because John Williams, I don't know if he's ever cameoed in a film. Well, I was going to say, I'm pretty sure. That in one of the recent Star Wars films he had a cameo. I could be completely making that up. Oh. I'm pretty sure that he's he's like. Maybe it was just like a voice cameo. I can't remember now. Oh, okay. I'm sure I heard somewhere that in something recently he was like a cameo or, or a voice cameo or something. And given how <laughs> many cameos are in the Star Wars sequel trilogy, that it wouldn't surprise yeah, me because there's a lot of them. There's yeah, a... I know Edgar Wright. Was Edgar Wright, in, yeah. I think he was in the Last Jedi. I yeah, think he, he is. played a resistance soldier. Yeah, same and, with Gareth um, Edwards. I think when Rise of Sky, yeah, when Rise of Skywalker was coming out, I think he tweeted or uh, posted on Instagram saying, "Here's me as a res- as a resistance trooper free." Sadly, I don't think he's made it to episode nine. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and like Joseph Gordon-Levitt voices the alien in in the Last Jedi, the the one that's like, "I told you to, you can't park there." Like the... I had no idea about that. Yeah, that's Joseph Gordon-Levitt. <laughs> there's all kinds of weird cameos in the sequel trilogy. It's, that's one of the reasons it sort of endears me to it, because there's a feeling sort of, oh, anyone can be in here. Daniel Craig, put on a Stormtrooper yeah. outfit. You're a Stormtrooper now. Prince Harry, you're a Stormtrooper now. <laughs> 
It's, it's, it's cool. Well, I know when um, Oliver Harper, Duncan Casey, and uh, Richard Jackson, when they did a commentary to Force Awakens, uh, Duncan joked, I should ask my agent if I could get into the Star Wars films. And honestly, I could see him play um, a First Order officer. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, bl- bloody Adrian Edmondson is in it, isn't he? He's in The Last Jedi. He plays the um, one of the mm-hmm. officers at the, yeah. in, the, in the thing. Yeah, there's, there's having trust issues and ending up on the street. How'd you go from <laughs> yeah. that to that? <laughs> what? I will yeah. say this scene... I mean, I think that's the only... Yeah. The only in-universe explanation you could give is that she doesn't want to go into all the details to yeah. scare a kid. I, I will say I don't think this scene works as well as the old man Marley scene in the first one. I think this this bit, this scene is kind of... Yeah, I don't know. It just doesn't. It just doesn't work. It doesn't have the emotional impact as as the old man Marley scene in the first one for me. Yeah, I think it would have been better if um, I don't know. They have Christmas dinner at the Plaza Hotel and Kevin invites her in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, that's the thing. Cause, that maybe because he gives her a turtle dove. Uh, ornament. <laughs> and it's like she's homeless. You've got all this money. <laughs> Invite her in. Yeah. Have a, it's Christmas. Yeah, because yeah, cause if, if I ever pass homeless people, I occasionally do give them some food. But yeah, same. Yeah, if I gave them a tree ornament, they'd probably rip my fucking head off and be like, <laughs> I'm fucking starving <laughs> and you give me this. Yeah, again, unusual suspect. <laughs> You're sitting up there <laughs> in your fancy fucking hotel room, sipping your fancy fucking wine, and you give me a fucking tree ornament? Fuck you. Fuck you and your fucking rich family. Because, <laughs> and also, unlike um, Old Man Marley, when we see at the end, he's been reunited with his family, we don't see her ever finding someone. No. <laughs> we don't know if she ever trusts someone again. We don't know if she gets a roof over her head. No, it's... She just yeah, gets just a tree ornament. <laughs> she gets a tree and ornament. that's it. <laughs> and she's just like, thank you. And it just comes across as like... <laughs> she's just like... like I, does want not to, want I want to install this kid, but... Oh, it's Christmas. <laughs> good deed erases a bad deed mm, I'm sorry to quote Stannis Baratheon from Game of Thrones a good deed does not wash out the bad yeah <laughs> it's, it's kind of like when people say like the whole JK Rowling thing when people are like what but look at all she's done for charity and stuff and I'm like yeah it's, yeah, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing, but Jimmy, that doesn't mean she's exempt Jimmy from being Savile a dick. Donated, yeah, Jimmy Stavell donated thousands for charity. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, you know... She it, excuse it, everything he did. Yeah, exactly. It, 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 yeah, it doesn't excuse it. It's it's amazing that all that ch- m- ch- money for charity was raised, but that doesn't excuse all the shit that happened. <laughs> That's the, you know, it's it's... Yeah... Yeah, because when we leave, uh, she says, don't make promises you can't keep. So obviously she still has trust issues. Yeah. And yeah, we don't know if that's ever been resolved I, I, by the end. It's just, she shows up to help him and then that's it. I'm expecting Kevin to come up to a whisper in her ear and go, those are the best kind. <laughs> from, <laughs> from Amazing Spider-Man. <laughs> uh, confirmed. Macaulay Culkin <laughs> and Brenda Fricker are in Spider-Man 3. Brenda Fricker will reprise her role as Pesci. Pigeon Lady. Or plot that. Yeah, because as of recording this video, I have seen so many <laughs> David Tennant to appear in Spider-Man Three. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> We've yeah, we, we, yeah, we, you know, it would not surprise me if we, if any old fucker's gonna be, be in Spider-Man Three now. <laughs> it's like... I mean, I might ring my agent up to say, um, "Can you get me into Spider-Man Three? Everyone else seems to be in it." Yeah, 
<laughs> Soul Deed is in Spider Man Three. How many oh, how many Spider Man have you seen? Three I have seen three And yeah, if if Maguire and Garfield are coming back that will be free. <laughs> yeah, well I think yeah. Toby Maguire was spotted at a costume fitting um yesterday. Uh-huh. And it's like, hmm, Toby Maguire's not been in anything. Like he's been in a voice role, but he's not been in anything properly for years. So I wonder what that could be. <laughs> yeah. Stuart Little in Spider-Man Three. Yeah. <laughs> Once again, confirming the unusual suspect shared universe theory. <laughs> Michael J. Fox returns to play Stuart Little in Spider-Man Three. garbage shoe hanging out the front like that. That looks so unattractive. Yeah. <laughs> Why would you put that there? It looks like an elephant's trunk. Plus, when he climbs up through it, it doesn't look like he has a lot of traction. It doesn't look like... It, it yeah. just looks like he's sliding through it because there's not a lot of traction there to actually climb. And yeah, it probably took you about an hour to draw that um, plan there, Kevin. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, the, the arrangement of, of this music is slightly different in this film, but I still think it's great. It's still one of my favourite like John Williams pieces ever. Yeah, definitely. Because usually when you think of John Williams, you think of Superman, Star Wars, yeah. Jurassic Park, E.T. No one ever brings up Home Alone. Heck, I'm surprised he came back to do the sequel. Um, yeah. Because if you look at Superman, the Superman sequels, he didn't come back to do them at all. They ju- the composers for no. those films just took his themes and adapted them. I think a lot of that on Superman, though, was the fact that he disagreed with Richard Donner being fired and everything. Whereas this one, he was oh, sort of okay. still he was still sort of very much on speaking terms with Chris Columbus. Where I think uh, there's this there's we still don't really know why he didn't do Superman two. But yeah, most people sort of ah, seem okay. to think that it's because he didn't. He either didn't like Richard Lester or massively disagreed with Richard Donner getting fired. So, which, which ah, is why okay. is why in Superman two the Richard Donner cut, most of the music is just copy and pasted from the first one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because they wanted to use as, as little as of Ken Thorne's stuff as possible. Oh, I love this line. <laughs> what kind of idiots do you have working here? The finest in New York. <laughs> and then <laughs> Tim Curry's oh, not like a little it. snort. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I made the discovery. I love that. It's just like, <laughs> um, I did it. Oh, the the um, slap she gives him and when he starts yeah. holding back tears it's so <laughs> funny <laughs> yeah I'd argue Kevin I mean in the first film Kevin um, being home alone kind of ruined their holiday because they all had to come back from Paris but yeah. here I'd argue him, him getting separated probably benefited it them did, yeah. they yeah. go from that cramped hotel with crap weather conditions to this where it actually feels like christmas <laughs> yeah they're in a better room arguably mm-hmm. a better city because there's all snow everywhere and like you said it's better weather conditions for christmas mm-hmm. oh to the teeth too bad lap it's awfully cold outside <laughs> his lip quivering <laughs> <laughs> oh god it reminds me of the in between us too chill it all right yeah <laughs> <laughs> That clock is terrifying. <laughs> that does look scary. <laughs> <laughs> really creepy. Imagine seeing that in the dark. Right, wouldn't they have emptied all the cash at this point? Because, yeah, does they need to take it down to the kids' hospital first thing in the morning or something? Yeah. <laughs> I 
Happy Hanukkah! Hanukkah! Oh God! I love this line, it's so ironic. Nobody even knows about <laughs> it. No, no, no. <laughs> Harry, Marv, he will knock four times. <laughs> That's their downfall. He will knock four times at Christmas. Nobody knows about <laughs> it. Do, 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 do. Could you let me out? <laughs> four knocks starts playing on the soundtrack. Yeah. And we, um, oh, I missed one of my favourite lines. He took our picture. How do my hair look? <laughs> <laughs> oh god! <laughs> he probably should have taken the picture before he knocked on the window. Yeah. Yeah, if he did that, they wouldn't have gone after him here. Yeah. How high does he go? <laughs> That's death. He's That's dead. That's death. He He's dead already. <laughs> yeah. It's like... If the fall was impactful enough to literally bend in the car. <laughs> Where is he? Smile. Smile. <laughs> <laughs> that needs to be on a Christmas card, that. Smile. Oh, I'm sure you can get it on a Christmas card. You must be able to. They're almost like one of the Merry independent from sites the or something. Sticky bandits. <laughs> and again, going back to the idea that you can't meet up in a big city like this, they just miss each just other. Just miss each other. But imagine if she had tried the um, the doorknob, considering yeah. you know that there's the, a nail gun in it. Well, the thing is, she walks Imagine off... if she went through the traps. She walks off, she gets in the taxi, Kevin runs in immediately. He would have seen her. <laughs> he would have, Walking yeah. up that street, he would have seen her. And, you know, if he just called after her, all of this could have been done. first trap and it's a brick <laughs> oh god it's a brick kid <laughs> this ain't like the last time this ain't his house you haven't been watching this film much. <laughs> I mean last time you did the thinking you all ended up in prison but yeah. Yeah, camera, and we will. Yeah, but you are aware he's he's still got the photos. <laughs> okay, it make more sense in the modern day if he said throw down your phone because nowadays photos are more digital than yeah. physical. <laughs> oh God! The the great thing about this is that you don't hear a cartoonish <laughs> funk or a funk. You actually hear <laughs> it. Properly... You hear the brick go on the bone. <laughs> <Doom. laughs> yeah, Harry. and it sounds so realistic, but Harry. obviously, if you his face would probably be destroyed at that yeah. point. Eat. <laughs> okay, kid. What about bricks? <laughs> apparently, some TV versions edited this down because apparently it was too violent. That for doesn't them. surprise me. Yeah. Yeah, Channel Four oh, seem to seem to love showing this every Christmas now. Like, but just this one. I, oh, I yeah, rarely ever do. see the first one. Oh, I always see. I always see these two oh, right. on at Christmas, definitely. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. 
He don't have no bricks. He's out of them. Oh yeah, the honest action, I think it's called. Skull Factory with Epidural <laughs> Hematoma. Marv is dead. And it just happens four times. Oh, it's right in the it's face. It's at what, 20... Yeah. I love that line. He didn't throw any at you. <laughs> they all hit Marv. <laughs> Harry! <laughs> <laughs> God. Yeah, there's definitely more pain in this one. Oh yeah, it's still funny. That's for me. Uh, there and were points where I back stuff on I the side it. of the road. Yeah. <laughs> no one picks it up. Well, I mean, it's midnight, Christmas Eve. Everyone's at home. I've seen a video where doctors examine this, and when he gets hit in the testicles, they say, Oh, that's bad. You could lose a testicle, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> you could lose a testicle. I think one of them even says, Yeah, that guy's not going to be procreating any time soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, scream. then again, Harry... Yeah. <laughs> Then again, Harry got shot in the crotch in the first film, and now Marv gets shot in the crotch. So yeah. I don't think any of them can procreate now. <laughs> Joe Pesci's doing his. Oh, yo. Why did I forget? Why did I forget? Why did I forget? Oh. Oh, Ow. <laughs> right in the nose. <laughs> it's amazing slapstick, it really is. Yeah. Because honestly, who hasn't looked at those fail videos on YouTube? Yes. Yeah. It's 100% <laughs> real, and we haven't gone, oh, ho, ho, ho. Schadenfreude. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Spine and rib fractures. What a fire I don't know thing. why he tried the ladder... In the first place, there's clearly a staircase there. Yeah. <laughs> I've got the subtitles on just so I can see the dialogue while we're talking, but um, every time Harry does yeah. his little muttering, it's the subtitles just say, muttering angrily. I've reached the top. Imagine if he had put a bed of... Imagine if he had put <laughs> put a bit of nails down there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ow. Oh, Harry. Marv, I want to play a game. <laughs> you spent your life. You spent your life taking money from children. Now you will pay the price. <laughs> an alternate take here that you can see if you watch the trailer because um, here the wrenches fall on him and he falls immediately to the floor but um, in the trailer like they all hit him he goes like Ooh. he stands up but then there's one more wrench that hits him on the head and that sends him to the floor <laughs> I think that's actually quite funny I was going to say like yeah the... and one detail I liked is that before he touched the doorknob he actually tested it to see if it's hot yeah I see. <laughs> he's learnt something <laughs> wow wow what a hole what a hole <laughs> I love how he sees the rope clearly but I love how angry he looks he's like <laughs> yeah. And now he's doing the hairy troll. The hairy troll. <laughs> Move your body like a hairy troll. 
<laughs> and then his body just go goes completely forward. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love the auto. <laughs> uh oh. He's got time to say auto, uh -oh, but not get out of the way. Yeah. And once again, when he's testing the light bulbs, I like how he does learn. He learns to stand back when he turns them on. Yeah, yeah. He now thinks he's he now thinks he's won. <laughs> kind of have to feel sorry a bit for Daniel Stern here because he's got paint makeup all over him. Yeah. It must have taken ages to apply <laughs> every detail for continuity. Oh, and his, his oh, mate as well. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah, in my YouTube poop of this, I made a... I put a caption under that, blah, and it's a uh, when you finish on her face. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is followed up with Harry saying, You're sick, you know, Dad. You're really sick. <laughs> it's an electricity thing where oh, it's, it shows his skeleton. <laughs> you actually see the skeleton yeah. and it's like... But it's still kept the hair. The skeleton's still got his yeah. hair. <laughs> now, apparently, Chris Columbus... Um, kept laughing so much he was on the floor in hysterics <laughs> and the reason apparently it went on so long is because he was laughing so much he forgot to say cut so <laughs> Daniel Stern just kept going I think it's only when he fell on the floor he got up and said uh, we're still going then he just saw Chris Columbus in tears on the floor of laughter <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this whole um, sticking your head into an exploding toilet, that's straight out of uh, Looney Tunes or Tom and Jerry. Yeah, it really is. The yeah, because way... I think there's like a Tom and Jerry moment when, um, I don't know, there's dynamite in a pot. He doesn't hear a bang and he's like, huh? And then, boom. <laughs> and his face is covered in soot. It's like that. So he just stands there, sort of just... <laughs> yeah. Take the hat off. And also, if you listen carefully, when he looks in the mirror, he says, Ah! Ah! He did it! <laughs> he's like, oh no, he's done it again! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you'd be dead from that. Oh yeah, sure. I love how you can hear the skin crack. <laughs> <laughs> I feel sorry for the stump man that had to, to stand on his hands and yeah. put his head into the toilet as the fire was going in his face. Mm, that's <laughs> horrible. <laughs> ha. Ha. Honestly, they're too likable to have all these traps done to them. <laughs> I know they're stealing from kids, but they seem like alright guys to hang out with. Now this bag of cement, I think it is, if that landed on your head, it wouldn't just um, knock you out, kill you and leave no injuries, it'd probably demolish your head. <laughs> yeah. It'd probably be headless. <laughs> Most likely. With his top top end of his spine probably crushed. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> and again his teeth are missing I think or they've gone black uh, yeah <laughs> he's is so it, convinced that this is going to work is it, yes. is it later on when um, he puts his hands on his hips and goes never <laughs> That's it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you had enough pain? Never! Never! 
And if you look at Harry's face, it's like, dude, don't answer him. <laughs> don't worry, Harry. I'll get him. <laughs> hey! Don't you know Kid always wins against two idiots? <laughs> Joke with them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I love this next bit here. Why don't you guys try the stairs? Right. Why are you listening to him? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and again, I do like how they learn something here. Yeah. It's what we've seen from the first film, but there's a variation on it. <laughs> Let's get him. Now they say, um, they say, um, uh, Harry says, he busted me in the mouth. Marv says, he got me in the schnoz, which obviously means nose. And if you actually pause when the pipe hits them, it hits Harry in the mouth and Marv in the nose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ironic. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> oh, he keeps up the whole, that's whatever number it is. <laughs> Three. <laughs> no. Never! <laughs> <laughs> when people tell me to stop buying physical media and use streaming services, never! Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's, it's like we see their noses are like misshapen and everything. Yeah. Ouch. <laughs> Decent like prosthetics actually. I think they are, yeah. yeah it's pretty decent. It's that crack of the nose that makes you yeah. the... Ow! <laughs> it's like the nose has become misshapen, so they just put it back into place like it's nothing. Ow. You back? <laughs> Hello? Hello? Yeah, you back. <laughs> yeah, just pause the film. I think we got disconnected. Yeah, there. same. Nearly done. Only for a couple okay, of seconds. Okay, so... Actually. One, two, three... Go. Go. Yeah, if you look at the side of these houses, you can see lights in, so people are obviously in them. Surprised they haven't <laughs> called the police when they heard the explosion. Yeah, you'd hear all this. Yeah. Surrender, kid. <laughs> I 
name it is. <laughs> Separate kid. Oh, his whimpering is priceless. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on, you big sissy. <laughs> <laughs> You were an aftershave? <laughs> what aftershave smells like don't kerosene? Really I don't know, but I really wouldn't want that. Yeah. It's kerosene! The rope is soaked in it! Yeah. <laughs> See, I'd go down and then... Oh, um, maybe not. If I was that far away, I'd keep going yeah. down and then just jump off before he, light he lit it. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I wouldn't try and go back up. Yeah, that would take longer. Out... Yeah, the flaming rope here. This is straight out of a saw film. <laughs> <laughs> Once the match is lit, you will only have 30 seconds to escape the rope. <laughs> Climb to safety or burn to death. The choice is yours. <laughs> <laughs> Yuck. Oh yeah, the honest action bit. They put that bit as um, Harry and Marv are dead. Harry, uh, Harry crushed by Marv. <laughs> <laughs> and later on, when um, they're getting devoured should we say by the birds it definitely looks like a horror film it particularly because they've got all this varnish on and it looks like blood ah! <laughs> apparently when that happened a bird actually flew into Daniel Stern's mouth he said it was awful <laughs> Ugh. I like how Kevin gets a taste of his own medicine here. Yes, yeah. <laughs> when the government says you don't earn enough to be skilled, but when the lockdown happens, you're a, you're a, you're deemed a key worker. Yeah. My how the tables have turned. <laughs> <laughs> I just love how, um, yeah, it's now gone from we're gonna do if he did to us to now I've got a fucking gun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, that varnish looks like blood, it looks like all the injuries they got from the house. <laughs> <laughs> it's straight out of a horror film. <laughs> I don't get about these. <laughs> yeah, I never made it to the sixth grade. You're not gonna eat. <laughs> that is a really cool one-liner that should be used more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The weird thing about these birds is when the fireworks go off, they don't fly away. But when the cop shoots his yeah. gun in the air, they go. Yeah, that's a bit inconsistent, but oh well. Oh god, this scream is priceless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here it is. <laughs> he should star in Alfred Hitchcock's remake of The Birds. The birds devour him. <laughs> the fact that the, the old plot that uh, trademark the unusual suspect yeah. is laughing <laughs> she's just laughing <laughs> oh it's very jolly <laughs> you're getting devoured by birds
fly away, but not when the fireworks are <laughs> there. <laughs> oh, he got feathers in his mouth. That must be awful. Yeah. Bad guy saying they'll kill me. <laughs> <laughs> That's the latest mixtape. <laughs> It'll be at number one. <laughs> he confesses to everything. <laughs> We're the sticky bandits. He <laughs> 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 forgets to spell. He's got very neat. His handwriting's better than mine. He's ten, and oh, <laughs> my yeah. handwriting's Adam terrible. Was, um, uh, I was always told to join up at school, but ironic to make it neater. But ironically, no one could understand what yeah. I was writing. So when I entered year nine, I was just like, "Screw it! I'll just write." That's how I so want weird. To. In primary school, we were told like it was com it was compulsory to join up your handwriting. It was like what? I can't understand. Like what? Stupid. I just love how it's like he wants to be with his Christmas tree. Wait a minute, there's a big Christmas a tree big in New one. York. <laughs> oh well, I'll just go to that. Yeah, people go missing in New York like every day and they're never seen again. Yeah, it's <laughs> creepy, isn't it? It's... Hey, hey. Yep. I like that little moment though between the cop and her. Like, I'd probably be doing the same thing you were doing. It's it's a cool <laughs> little. I I really like that. <laughs> I'd be lying dead in the gutter. Kevin is so much stronger and braver than I am. He probably picks on people who live in the gutter. <laughs> <laughs> He tortures people who live in the gutter. <laughs> that is an incredible tree, though. I, like the. You, I, except for great, this yeah. year, except for this year, the Rockefeller tree is always amazing. Yeah, I have to look up some pictures of what it looks like this year. Yeah. I think I might just become depressed as you as you describe it. They just happen to yeah. show up. <laughs> wow, that worked fast. Hey, I don't waste any time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah.
like my mum looking for me. She knows I like HMV. I need to find the nearest <laughs> HMV. Yeah, this is Oh, wait, insane. we're in a big city. There could be millions of them. <laughs> okay, one detail I do like here is that all these um, siblings and cousins here, they're all sharing beds, but Fuller gets yeah. one to himself. And the parents get a massive hotel room, like, all to themselves as well. Like, it's this whole yeah, other extension. Yeah, they do, and they want to share a room. <laughs> yeah. It's not like it's a small room. They could have left yeah, even some like... people in there. Yeah, there's like, um, there's like a second floor that's upstairs. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I like that. I like these. Um, he, he he tries to do the whistle thing, but it just doesn't work. Oh yeah, but he can't. <laughs> and I love the whole. No, oh, never this gooey sh 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 It's Uncle Frank as well. Okay, Kevin. All right, all right. I mean, who's willing to bet that the following year they'd be back to the same thing again? Probably. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, I think they should do like a Home Alone free, but. Have it be like what Terminator Dark Fate is like to the Terminator films. It, it ignores everything it, a, after film number two and yeah. says, We're the true third film. <laughs> <laughs> Turtle Doves? Oh, yeah. There's that homeless person outside. Should I invite her in? Nah, I'll just give her the tree ornament. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, what's this? <laughs> <laughs> what, what, seriously? You're giving me this on Christmas? <laughs> yeah, I think Kevin actually did a benefit to his family there. Just look at that. The... Park looks way more Christmassy yeah, than for sure. a rainy place in Miami. <laughs> you can tell she's repressing so much anger. Uh... Kevin's as bad as Ebenezer Scrooge. If they'd rather die, they'd better do it and replace and decrease the surplus population. The <laughs> <laughs> running gag with the tip. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah, why, why bring the room service bill on Christmas Day? <laughs> yeah, I know, <laughs> yeah. Make more sense if it was Boxing Day, because, I don't know, the 27th. Because I love how um, he said, yeah, nice family, yeah. Yeah, nice family. <laughs> when taking his gum. <laughs> yeah, nice family. <laughs> Again, going back to the whole thing that Buzz could be a Bond villain. Yeah. Very Christmas indeed. <laughs> I can imagine Blofeld saying that in Honor Majesty Secret Service. Very Christmas indeed, Mr. Bond. <laughs> <laughs> so he could... Kevin could hear that from there. I was going to say, Kevin could hear his... big was yeah. he shouting <laughs> in the room? Everyone must have gone deaf. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that's Home Alone 2. That's the Home final. Alone final. Home Alone film. Nothing else after this. Yeah. Bomb people. I love it. It's, it's great. There's nothing more to see here. 
yeah i do love it it's it's, it's, it's I, like you said i i there are times where i prefer it to the first one obviously objectively it's not as good yeah because but... i think in terms of i think in terms of heart and yeah in terms of heart and emotion it probably falls flat when compared to the first one yeah. i think it makes up for that for being probably funnier than the first film yes yeah for sure Mm-hmm. Yeah. But honestly, yeah, it's a funny film that I watch every year, and... Yeah, yeah shame. It's, it's just, same. um... It's, it's the same film again, but I don't care. Yeah, exactly. You can't... You, it's... It, it's just... It, it's just... It, I, I like to say it's different enough as well, because I like how it, it, it takes the... scenes from the first one mm-hmm. and does play around with them and does kind of mess around with them in, in cool ways and stuff it's yeah exactly yeah it has that familiar feel to it that um yeah yeah i think is why it's it is always shown every year uh, yeah alongside the first film on tv and um yeah i think the best thing you can be if you're a filmmaker is make a christmas film because it'll never be forgotten it'll always be repeated at least once a year exactly yeah i it's i heard something Whether say it's recently bad or good it'll always be repeated exactly yeah I heard, <laughs> yeah it's just like um yeah it, it, you know if, if it's bad if it's bad or terrible it'll always be someone's favorite christmas film so, like it'll always be a tradition for someone it will be uh... yeah yeah mm-hmm yeah, I knew someone from uni who uh, said um, the CGI Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer film was one of her favourite Christmas films. I'm like, <laughs> okay. But, um, yeah, at least you got some enjoyment out of it. I'm happy yeah, for I mean, you. Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> mm-hmm. That is insane, actually. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but fair enough. Mm-hmm. Now, just one more fact before we do sign off. Apparently, originally for this film, John Hughes intended to shoot a second and third Home Alone film back to back. Would have been would have been the Back to the yeah. Future trilogy of Home Alone. <laughs> what? How would <laughs> yeah. that have gone? <laughs> would it have ended on a cliffhanger yeah, like know. with like Kevin about to be shot or something and then Home, Home Alone 3 uh, would have no, been like I know. Um, no Kevin um, they're in the hotel they get a phone call you know Kate picks it up and he's like hello <laughs> mom it's me I'm I'm home alone again no it can't be you You're, you <laughs> just came back from being home alone yeah but I'm back from home alone being from the future <laughs> great stuff <laughs> to be concluded. Yeah. Home Alone 3. He has to save Mr. Home Duncan. Yeah. <laughs> dear, dear Kevin, if my calculations are correct, you'll have just seen me he vanish into into one of your booby traps. But rest assured, I'm alive and well. <gasps> Mr. Duncan's alive! I mean, he's <laughs> in a booby trap, but he's alive! <laughs> uh, yeah. So that was Home Alone 2. I hope you've enjoyed the commentary, everyone. Uh, we've enjoyed doing it. We love the Home Alone films, as you can probably tell from this, mm-hmm. from these commentaries. Um, it's just us sort of going on about how much we love them, but they are great. Uh, next time, yeah. next time for the Christmas commentaries, what will we be doing next time? Next time we will be dipping into the past, present, and future with sock puppets. <laughs> we'll see you then. <laughs> <laughs> Get the Michael Caine impersonations ready. That's all we're saying. <laughs> so uh <laughs> until next time uh i'm sorry si- uh, wait what am i saying uh, until next time go subscribe to isaac's channel um and yeah mm-hmm. we will see you next time merry Bye-bye. christmas you filthy animals <laughs> bye-bye and a happy new year <laughs>